ladles, jelly spoons, and unspecified utensils, Aaron's Animals is now officially 10 years old. Which may explain a few things about my current mental state. It's okay, we're good, it's all good, everything's good, we're good. I made a coconut cup. I'm good. So, as a celebration, we have a fun video coming up today because I got an email which has made me very, very happy because it's from a company that I have openly stated I am not a big fan of. And, um, well, I wasn't expecting to get any messages from them. So let me just read this to you. Take these off so I can actually see. Hi there, Erin. I hope you are well. Me too. I wanted to reach out as I'm a marketing executive for Omelette and recently came across your YouTube channel and loved your video on your pet room makeover. I was wondering if you would be interested in reviewing our cute hamster cage. Our cute hamster cage is recommended for gerbils and Syrian hamsters. Keep note of that. Syrian hamsters. Check out our page here. Thank you. I did. I, I checked it out so... It, I have 11 pages of notes on this. I checked it out. We would absolutely love it if you featured our cute cage in your new pet room and reviewed its various elements such as the easy to clean bedding tray, the safety measures and draft free ventilation. We would also provide you with a promo code for your viewers and a UTM link. Also if you sign up as an affiliate you would receive commission for each sale generated from your individual text link. Please reach out to me at redacted information because I don't I don't want to put this person on blast because they just work for them. And I look forward to hearing from you. Well, you're hearing from me. I did not reply back to that email because um, I obviously have absolutely no interest in doing any kind of collaboration with this company. I have spoken about this in the past, in videos, in my comment section. Um, I've never said anything particularly favorable about it. So instead of replying back to them, I thought I would do one better. I am going to review this cage like they've asked me to, um, but I'm gonna do it without any kind of like collaborative deal, nothing. You don't have to do anything on your end, Omelette. Don't you worry about it. I'm just gonna do this off my own steam. It's not a problem. I was actually gonna do this review video back in, I wanna say 2016, I'm not sure. It might've been later than that, but I was going to review this cage and because it's me, I never got around to it. And then so much time had passed and I didn't really hear people talking about this cage anymore. It used to be a bit more trendy. Um, and so I thought there was no point in doing this review. But since they brought it up, Now, as a being that inhales far more egg than medically necessary, I was curious to know what, if any, relationship the company shares with the famous egg-based breakfast dish, l'omelette. Because you're worth it. Turns out their very first product was the Eggloo, which is, as they describe it, a revolutionary chicken house. Now, I don't know enough about chicken keeping to comment on this design, but I will give them 10 points for the terrible pun. I hate that I love it. Anyway, they sell original products for a wide variety of animals. Unfortunately, some of their designs are clearly prioritizing aesthetics above all else, while the needs of the animal are barely taken into consideration. Please welcome to the stage, the cute hamster cage. This cage came onto the scene around the same time converted furniture enclosures were gaining popularity. Cages like the Calax and Detolf, which today are very well known and popular throughout the community. These conversions were hamster owners' solutions to the scarcity of suitably sized commercial cages, a problem that still plagues the community a decade on. As our research and understanding of hamsters' basic needs grew, we began to realize just how much space they actually require in order to give them proper care. Unlike the nightmare cages from and before the early 2000s, which could subtly reside on a desk or a countertop, modern cages take up a very notable amount of space, and so the need for them to blend in with surrounding furniture was an important feature for a lot of owners. The cute cage has attempted to follow this trend of blending in seamlessly with other furniture. However, the designers clearly missed out on the most important part. The entire reason furniture conversions are popular in the first place is so your 800 plus square inch cage doesn't stand out like a sore thumb in your living room. The cute cage is so small it would barely even blend in as a nightstand. So exactly how small is the cute? Well, luckily Omelette makes the internal dimensions really easy to find. All you have to do is go to the product page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, all the way down, keep going, that's it. 
until you reach this very irrelevant section named Free Extras, where they pat themselves on the back for including a plastic bowl, a mini bottle, and a cheap 7-inch wheel with your $109 cage. Okay, that's... that's... that's a number, that's a pro- that's... oh. Open that section up, scroll a little bit more to the FAQ, and under the fourth question, you can find the internal dimensions given nice and clearly in... Feet. Who measures hamster cages in feet? Who measures a one-foot hamster cage in feet? So I've done the extra work of translating these numbers into units that people actually use, and this cage comes out to be a whopping 245 square inches. 245? You've got to be kidding me. We'd love to see this in your new pet room, would you? Would you really? Well, were you planning on sending a magnifying glass with it? Because I don't know how else I'm going to see it. Is that one of the free extras? Because I think for $109 it probably should be. We interrupt this honest review to bring you an ad break. Today's video is sponsored by my merch, because it always is. I wonder why, I wonder why I don't get sponsorships. It's, it's not like, it's not like companies ask to work with me and then I just roast their products or anything. I'm so good at what I do. Anyway, back to the video. As a visual aid, I've taped out the exact dimensions of the cute so you can get an idea of just how tiny it is. This is Jeremy. He will be my assistant. He is a made-to-scale, eight-week-old Syrian hamster, which means he is slightly smaller than the average adult Syrian, but about the same size as the Syrian used to advertise this cage. A few things that need to be taken into account that affect the setup. First of all, because the burrowing box is solid plastic and has no ventilation, Onlet added ventilation bars to the front and back of the main floor, and these are approximately 2.7 inches wide each. Because this is such a tiny space, the ventilation is even more important, which means that you cannot put any supplies over these areas, as doing so would greatly reduce the airflow to the base. So we've already lost five and a half inches of usable space before we even begin. The cage comes with a 7.4 inch wheel that has to be fixed to the bars at the back. Of course though, a 7.4 inch wheel is way too small for a Syrian to use safely, and almost all adult Syrians need at least 11 to 12 inches. But as the height of the level is only 11.6 inches, and most 11 inch wheels have have external measurements larger than this, you might be able to physically fit one in, but it certainly won't be usable. This is apparently the only way you're going to get an 11 inch wheel into this cage, is by buying a second $100 cage, joining the two together, and then taking the floor out of one of them, and putting your wheel in that one. That should be a red flag! There's also the fixed tube in the centre of the floor which takes away some of the space, and I couldn't find any info on the diameter of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's about 2.5 inches, because anything smaller than that wouldn't be safe for a Syrian to use anyway. Now call me crazy, but somehow, for some reason, I don't think my multi-chamber hide is gonna fit. And that's a real shame, because these are great for hamsters, so we'll just have to settle with a basic small hide. This is the smallest one I have that will also fit a Syrian hamster. For a sand bath, again, I can't really fit anything big in here, so we'll settle with this small one. It's six by eight and a half inches, so just about big enough for a Syrian to roll about in. The food dish, of course. Unfortunately, scatter feeding isn't really an option in a space this size. And I threw in a couple of small chew toys, because dental care is very important for rodents. But now we've hit a bit of a problem, because if if I were to add anything else, Jeremy would start to have a really hard time moving around, especially once he's all grown up. Now the real cage has the advantage of being able to hang things from the barred walls, so you might be able to add a little hammock or something, but realistically, once you've added the very basic necessities of a hide, sand bath, bowl, wheel and chews, there's not really any space left for enrichment. And you might be wondering why I haven't accounted for the bottom level, but remember, that is designed as a burrowing space, and burrowing is essential for hamsters, which means that level needs to be filled with bedding, not toys. So this really is all the space you have to work with. Let's take a moment to talk about this centre tube, because Omelette seems pretty proud of this idea, and if I'm honest, I don't dislike the concept. In fact, I think it could have been a really good feature if it was built into a cage larger than a shoebox. My only real problem with the tube is how it negatively affects the burrow box. The lower half of the cute cage is dedicated to a clear plastic drawer that's supposed to be for burrowing and nesting, 
but like the rest of the cage is obviously way too small for that. Hamster burrows are much, much bigger than this enclosure. They consist of long tunnels and multiple underground chambers. So immediately you have taken away the ability to perform one of their most basic natural behaviors. Surprisingly though, the depth of this box isn't an issue. Usually this is where commercial cages fall flat, but it's 11 and a half inches deep, which meets the minimum needs of a Syrian. The problem is that central tube, because if you fill the burrow box up all the way, you can't move the tube up and down, making the box completely inaccessible. In order for the tube to function, the base of the box can only have a couple of inches of bedding in it. This one here, you can see just how much bedding you can actually put in, which is not the full 11 inches. You can fill it about halfway. Looking at it, it does seem like the bedding's been pushed up more at the front to make room for the tube to go down, so it's probably only about five inches of bedding overall, which is not enough for a Syrian. And I may not be a gerbil person, but I know for a fact five inches is not enough for a gerbil, which means the burrow box cannot be used for burrowing in. Genius. The burrow box is also promoted as being an easy cleaning solution since, in theory, all you'd have to do is remove the drawer, dump the waste, wipe it clean, and refill it. But like the rest of the cage, this entire idea is based on very outdated care practices. First, because of how small it is, you'd need to clean it at least once a week, which is way too frequently. Overcleaning a cage is not good for your hamster's well-being as the constant changes are very stressful, and a stressed hamster is neither a happy nor a healthy hamster. Again, because of the lack of size, you'd also need to change all of the bedding at once, which is something owners typically avoid doing because it removes too much of the hamster's familiar scent. Enclosures are supposed to be kept clean through a combination of regular spot cleaning and only changing one quarter to one third of the bedding every few weeks, something that's only possible to do in a suitably sized cage. This means you cannot even clean the cute cage properly unless you completely disregard your hamster's well-being. If you're that one person currently typing out a comment that says the cage is fine as long as you take your hamster out every day, let me stop you right there. Your hamster still needs plenty of enrichment and lots of space inside their enclosure, even if you take them out every single day even if you take them out twice a day or three times a day. It still doesn't negate their other needs. This scarily common suggestion only further demonstrates a lack of understanding for the hamster's basic care. A correctly cared for hamster should be able to theoretically thrive in their cage with minimal human intervention. Exploration outside of the cage can be a wonderful activity for some hamsters, but it can never replace their need for a suitable, spacious, enriching enclosure. And if you're the person about to tell me that the cage is fine for keeping dwarf hamsters in, just like Syrian hamsters, dwarf hamsters also also need deep substrate for burrowing in, a huge selection of enrichment of different types, different levels, different textures, all sorts of stuff. They need a lot. Being small doesn't change that. And second, Omelet kind of backed themselves into a corner on this one by mentioning in several places on their website, this cage is designed for Syrian hamsters and they recommend against using it for dwarfs. So Omelet's own words, it is not for dwarf hamsters, it is designed for Syrian hamsters. What occurred to me? When Omelet contacted me, they sent me a link to their United States website. I, of course, do not live in the United States. I live in Cyprus. Don't ask me where that is. Google is your friend. And as they offered to send me one of their cages to review, that got me to thinking, I wonder if they even know what country I'm in and if they even ship to my actual country. You wouldn't believe the number of companies that I've actually wanted to work with that have offered to send me things in the past and I've checked their website and they don't post in my country and I said to them, hey, is this gonna be an issue? And then they just ghost me. <laughs> so anyway, I went to the delivery section of one of their websites, scroll down, see what countries they go to and uh, they do not ship to my country, surprise, surprise. They do, however, ship to Australia, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Spain, Sweden, and the USA. And they have dedicated websites for all of those countries, which means those countries also have dedicated review sections and I thought it'd be interesting to find out how well they're selling in other countries, particularly how they're doing in countries like Germany, where the hamster care standards are much higher than most other places. So we head on over to the German website. We take a moment to appreciate the word for guinea pig because that'll never not be just wonderful to me. That's the best word. Well done, Germany, 10 out of 10. We go all the way down to the reviews at the bottom of the cute page. The first difference, there are only 19 reviews on this. So this cage is not nearly as popular in Germany, surprise, surprise. And there are only 13 five-star reviews, but there is one one star review. Whoever left this one star review clearly knows a thing or two about actual hamster care, but it's not their review that's interesting. It's the reply from Omelette that caught my interest because if you go to the American website and you go to their one star reviews, they've got four one star reviews on there, and Omelette does not reply back to the only one star review criticizing the size. They reply back to the ones talking about 
problems with the cage in general, with the tube, stuff like that. And they just ignore- they literally- there's, there's four reviews, they replied to three of them, the only one they ignore is the size one. Interesting thing to take note of. But the German one they replied. And I have a translator. <laughs> so this was their reply. Thank you very much for your feedback. There are no definite standards for housing animals. Always a great defense. That's that's wonderful. When you someone's criticizing the size of your cage, well, there's no rules to say that I can't do this. So my dude, that's not an argument. That's not a defense. It is up to the designers to try and create a home that best suits the needs of the animal and owner so they can both enjoy the animal husbandry experience. And you did a shit job of it. Omelette recognizes that a large part of animal well-being is providing them with a safe, hygienic home and plenty of variety and activity. You understand that? And yet, and yet, those last two things on that list, you just... It, it, mm. You just forgot those in the moment, huh? Those were an afterthought. A real after- after the cage was built and put on production and sold thought. At Omelette, we invest heavily in product development to ensure our products are fun for owners and pets alike. I like how you put owners first there. That's not what's supposed to come first when it comes to an enclosure. We're the second thought. The pets are the first thought. It's for them, not us. Since the cute was launched, many thousands of hamsters have moved into their new cages. That is not something you want to brag about. That is not a flex, my friend. That is very sad. And now we're enjoying the deep rooting- the deep rooting bowl? That's got to be a bad translation of the- of the burrowing box. The burrowing box doesn't work. We've been over this. That box has no practical function. It sucks. The upper floor with the running wheel, that's too small for any Syrian hamster to use safely, and the feeding area. The bowl? Are you including- are, are you still patting yourself on the back for the little cheap plastic bo- Omelette. I had you for breakfast. I did and it was actually quite delicious. I'll have a good omelette for breakfast. And the view through the crystal clear front into the rest of the house. Yes, yes, your hamster's lack of privacy is very important to us. Prey animals love to feel like they're being watched 24 seven. They go crazy for that. That's just like, that's their crack. Can't get enough of it. Am I gonna get demonetized for saying crack? Not if I'm talking about butt cracks. Oh no, I can get demonetized for that. Well. YouTube's no fun anymore. I can assure you the cute is big enough for a hamster. Yes, physically you can put a hamster in there. It is big enough for a hamster. It isn't big enough for a hamster to thrive in, but you never claim that it is, so I guess you're getting off scot-free there, aren't you? With those tricky little words of yours. The cage was thoroughly tested for many years before it was launched. It was developed together with animal experts. How would you feel if I were to tell you that the phrase animal experts doesn't mean anything? It doesn't have a specific meaning to it. They could have consulted somebody who has an expert knowledge on orangutan care, and they would technically be an animal expert because they are an expert on a certain species of animal. But if you're consulting them about hamster husbandry, obviously they're not gonna know what they're talking about unless they've also studied hamster husbandry. That is a phrase that they have intentionally used so they don't have to admit that they did not consult somebody who actually knows on an expert level about hamster husbandry, hamsters in the wild, hamsters in general. Whoever they consulted about this is not somebody who knows about hamster husbandry. So that is a straight up lie because nobody who knows the basics about hamster life, about how hamsters live and thrive and survive would ever sign off on something like this. They would never want their name against something like this because it's bull. It's com it, it is an atrocious enclosure. And animal owners, that's literally someone who bought a hamster yesterday, is an animal owner. And again, doesn't have to be a hamster. You could have consulted dog owners, for all we know. That's my alarm going off to tell me to calm the fuck down. I'm aware that it's lunchtime, okay? But I'm hyper-focusing on this, and so I will eat tomorrow. Thank you very much. And meets the legal requirements, does it? Because in the very first sentence, you were saying there are none of those. That those don't exist. That it's, you get to just make it up. So which is it? Are there no standards or are there legal requirements? In our office, two generations of hamsters have lived in the cute, all happy and healthy. Lies. It is not possible for a hamster to thrive in this habitat because it isn't big enough to provide them with their basic enrichment needs. So you're again, you're just, that, that, that's an opinion based on you not understanding hamster's needs and also clearly body language because I can guarantee you that hamster was displaying stress behaviors and you were just ignoring them or seeing them as cute. And as for the healthy bit, uh, that just means your hamster didn't get sick in their lifetime. That's all healthy means. That has nothing to do with the cage. That has to do with the fact that they didn't come into contact with bacteria or, or viruses that would make them sick. And they also had good enough genetics that they had no genetic issues to make them sick. 
um, healthy is not a reflection of their cage. I mean, aside from, yeah, obviously they're not gonna come into much contact with bacteria because you're over cleaning it. It doesn't mean anything. It, 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 it means nothing about the cage itself. That is not a defense, again. Like other pets, they need time away from their home because they need stimulation. They need stimulation in their home, Susan. In their home. For this reason, we recommend running balls, because of course they do, in spite of the fact that running balls do not provide enrichment. They are just trapping your hamster in their wheel until you decide it's time for them to come out. Stop using hamster balls, they're so outdated, they offer your hamster nothing. Or labyrinths. Okay, labyrinths, fine. This is the best bit though. This is the bit that's gonna make you just, oh. Oh, jump for joy. Jump for joy. You're ready to jump. As I was about to read this out, I just noticed that they don't direct the sentence towards your hamster, they direct it towards you. Is it a legal workaround? Who knows? Half an hour every two days will keep you healthy, satisfied, and stimulate you well. <laughs> I mean, they're not claiming that it'll do it for the hamster, but half an hour every two days every two. So not even every day. Your hamster also exists for 24 hours out of the day. And you, you, you think that only 30 minutes of that should include enrichment. Do you now? And not every day, every two days. I want to do the maths on that. So hamsters have an average lifespan of about 18 to 24 months. Now that's only the average lifespan. Obviously some hamsters may live shorter lives than that. Some may live longer lives than that. So let's go to the lower end of that. Let's say their hamster lives 18 months. 13,140 hours of life. Great stuff. In 18 months, there are 547.5 days. We're gonna round that up to 548. Now they recommend only taking your hamster out every other day, which means there are only 274 days in your hamster's lifetime that you're going to be taking them out. 30 minutes a day for 274 days is 8,220 minutes of total time out of their cage. 18 months contains 788,401 minutes, which means that omelette recommends that your hamster only needs to spend 1.04% of their entire life outside of the cute hamster cage. 99% of their time apparently should be spent in this cage, according to Omelette. In this cage that I have just shown you is a piece of sh Wow, I'm so shocked that a company would lie to me to try and get more sales. <gasps> Incredible. I don't believe in just dumping info on people without also offering them solutions. So I was going to compile a list of alternative cages that are significantly larger and also cheaper than the cute. But as I was doing so, I realized that Tori already has an up-to-date video on this subject. So I'll just go ahead and link you to that. Saves me a ton of work. Thanks, Tori. I will also link below a video playlist of some of my own DIY cages that I've built over the years, just in case you want a really budget-friendly but completely customizable option. I think the biggest problem with this cage and why it sells so well is that the target audience of companies like this are people who don't know any better. The undereducated, the people who think the hamster gear hasn't changed since the 90s, the people who think the hamsters are just disposable toys for kids, the people who just don't care. The sad thing is that a lot of people would do better for their hamsters if they knew that they needed to do better, they just don't know. And you can't fix something if you're not aware there's a problem there in the first place. And so to an extent, some of the people who've bought this enclosure are also also victims of quite a predatory business strategy. Companies like this use people-focused buzzwords to trick you into thinking that you're buying an amazing product when you're not. I mean, the first paragraph of their website talks all about how great the cage is for you, how easy it is for you to clean, how wonderful it will be to have in your home because it looks so nice and will blend in with your furniture. Throughout the entire page, talking about the home that your hamster is supposed to spend their entire life living in, they don't talk about how it benefits your hamster, obviously because they can't because it doesn't. The only real benefits to your pet that they talk about are the borrow box, which they can't borrow in because you can't put enough bedding in because otherwise the tube won't work. I mean, it says right there, their large deep bedding tray allows your gerbils and hamsters to nest and burrow naturally, but it doesn't. That's just not true. It doesn't work like that. It's not functional like that. Another benefit for your hamster is their really weird claim that their patented special tube will somehow keep your hamster healthy. I'm not even really sure how to respond to that. That's such a weird claim. Our plastic tube that moves up and down is great for your hamster's health. How? Your hamster's health relies on two factors. One, 
genetics, that they're not born with some inherited illness or weakness or disease or anything like that. And two, luck. Luck that they don't come into contact with viruses and bacteria that might get them sick. And luck that they don't get injured. Obviously, you can help those last two things as the owner by keeping their enclosure clean not over cleaning it, there is a big difference, and also making sure that it's safely set up. But for the most part, your house's health relies on genetics and luck. So your tube is not is not contributing anything to I I'm, I'm so confused by that statement. It threw me the first time I read it. I wrote that down in my notebook and just underlined it as being weird. Such a weird thing to say. Oh, and they talk about how secure it is for your hamster because it has just a regular locking door and also the tray can't be knocked out, which is like bare minimum for safety. The majority of what they talk about is how the cage benefits you as the owner. And that's what lures people in. That's what tricks people into buying it because it sounds so great when they're constantly talking about, hey, look at all these benefits, look at all these benefits but people are missing out on the fact that they're only talking about the benefits for the person and they're just glazing over the pet. Like they're adding in just a couple of sprinkles of weird little things here and there so it makes it seem like it's also beneficial for the pet. But when you break everything down, there's nothing there. It's just nothing. It's just a crumbly mess. The thing that's really annoying about this to me is it's not like this is a financial issue. Like it's one thing if it's a young kid who's relying on their pocket money or their parents' money and their parents aren't all that great with the, you know, being good pet owners thing and they can only like spend a very small amount on a cage so they can only get a very small cage. That's one situation that's still not great to be talked about a different time. But this is a hundred dollar cage and I know I keep going on about the price but I genuinely, as somebody who designs and builds cages, and knows how much it costs to do that and how much labor goes into handmade cages. I can build a basic 1000 square inch hamster cage that looks nice for 50 euros. And if I add the labor costs onto that, then yeah, maybe that would cost about 100 euros if I sold cages, which I don't. But this, this is not worth, like this is cheap materials. This is cheap, lightweight wood plastic, it's machine made, mass produced. It's not like there's handmade labor costs going into this and they're selling it for a hundred dollars. The profit on that must be so intense. Oh, also it comes to you flat packed. So you have to build it yourself. So there's that taken out of the equation. Like it's, uh, I, I, oh, the price thing really bothers me. But my point with that is that anyone who's spending a hundred dollars on a cage this small, just so it looks nice in their home is not tight for money. You know, like this is not, this is not a case of you didn't have the money, you couldn't afford it. Cause I know people are always come in with, well, maybe it's all they could afford. This is not all they could afford. If they had a hundred dollars to spend on the cage, this is not all they could afford. They could have afforded so much more. The photos of these setups and the reviews that go with them are really the thing that pushed me into completing this video and making sure I got this review done and out there. Because when you search on YouTube for information about this cage, Everything you get is just the same stuff. It's just undereducated people spouting nonsense about how good this cage is because they don't know any better. And then Omelette just trying to push the product because sales. So even if a person was considering this cage and wanted to do more research on it outside of the main website, they're still just gonna find nonsense information, just misinformation from people who don't know what they're talking about. So my hope is because I have a big enough audience, because I am a trusted voice in the hamster community, that hopefully this video will do well enough that when people search for more information on this cage, they might find it first before the other stuff. Or maybe it'll turn out that I just sacrificed my brain cells for nothing. Who knows? <laughs> kind of weird that there's not more reviews on this cage. It's been around for a long time and a lot of people are aware of it. I feel like there used to be reviews on it, like by people who know what they're talking about. Let me just have it be noted here. If this video does mysteriously disappear, go private, get taken down. Um, it is not because I've changed my opinions. Hello children, welcome to the end of the video, which was filmed at the beginning of the video, but you didn't see that because magical editing skills. I could not be bothered to change my clothes in between takes, so it is I'm a little more obvious than it should be. I just couldn't be bothered. This shirt, look at it. Look, you tell me, you tell me I should ever change out of this shirt and you would be wrong. I may not be serving looks, but I will definitely be serving cheap cocktails at a beach bar, which means I get to hang around with all the hot girls. Mm. What are we doing? Oh, closing out the video, that's right. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed my petty nonsense. I hope this video has been educational as well as informative. I hope I'm not in any legal trouble. Ooh.
you need to be so grateful that you're on the other side of the screen right now because that was the most violent garlic breath I think I have ever experienced or gifted onto the world. I'm pretty sure I just broke some international peacetime laws. If you ever wondered what Aaron smells like, garlic mostly. I love garlic, it's good, leave me alone. I don't need to tell you to leave me alone, I stink of garlic, of course you'll do that. I am the captain of a sinking ship and you are my resilient orchestra, so please, Play on down in the comment section. I will be down there to chat with you shortly, I'm sure, unless I post this video at like two o'clock in the morning, in which case I'll see you when it's my morning or afternoon, depending on when I wake up, who knows. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't buy this cage and I will see you guys whenever I see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.